Hey there, Comets. I'm back with another story time. We're going to be working on Chapter 2 of Frindle. Chapter 2 is called Mrs. Granger. Fifth grade was different. That was the year to get ready for middle school. Fifth grade meant passing classes. It meant no morning recess. It meant real letter grades on your report card. Most of all, it meant Mrs. Granger. There were about 150 kids in fifth grade. There were seven fifth grade teachers, two math, two science, two social studies, but only one language arts teacher. In language arts, Mrs. Granger had a monopoly and a reputation. Mrs. Granger lived alone in a tidy little house in the older part of town. She drove an old pale blue car to school every morning, rain or shine, snow or sleet, hail or wind. She had a perfect attendance record that stretched back farther than anyone could remember. Her hair was almost white, swept away from her face and up into something like a nest on the back of her head. Unlike some of the younger women teachers, she never wore pants to school. She had two skirt and jacket outfits, her gray uniform and her blue uniform, which she always wore over a white shirt with a little cameo pin at the neck. And Mrs. Granger was one of those people who never sweats. It had to be over 90 degrees before she even took off her jacket. She was small as teachers go. There were even some fifth graders who were taller. But Mrs. Granger seemed like a giant. It was her eyes that did it. They were dark gray, and if she turned them on full power, they could make you feel like a speck of dust. Her eyes could twinkle and laugh too, and kids said she could crack really funny jokes. But it wasn't the jokes that made her famous. Everyone was sure that Mrs. Granger had x-ray vision. Don't even think about chewing a piece of gum within 50 feet of her. If you did, Mrs. Granger would see you and catch you and make you stick the gum into a bright yellow index card. Then she would safety pin the card to the front of your shirt and you'd have to wear it for the rest of the school day. After that, you had to take it home and have your mom or dad sign the card and bring it back to Mrs. Granger the next day. And it didn't matter to Mrs. Granger if you weren't in fifth grade because the way she saw it, Sooner or later, you would be. All the kids at Lincoln Elementary School knew that at the end of the line, fifth grade, Mrs. Granger would be the one grading their spelling tests and their reading tests, and worst of all, their vocabulary tests, week after week, month after month. Every language arts teacher in the world enjoys making kids use the dictionary. Check your spelling, check that definition, check those syllable breaks. But Mrs. Granger didn't just enjoy the dictionary. She loved the dictionary, almost worshipped it. Her weekly vocabulary list was 35 words long, sometimes larger. As if that wasn't bad enough, there was a word of the day on the blackboard every morning. If you gave yourself a day off and didn't write one down and look it up and learn the definition, sooner or later, Mrs. Granger would find out, and then, just for you, there would be two words of the day for a whole week. Mrs. Granger kept a full set of 30 dictionaries on a shelf at the back of the room, but her pride and joy was one of those huge dictionaries with every word in the universe in it, the kind of book it takes two kids to carry. It sat on its own little table in the front of her classroom, sort of like the altar in the front of a church. Every graduate of Lincoln Elementary School for the past 35 years could remember standing at that table, listening to Mrs. Granger's battle cry, look it up, that's why we have the dictionary. Even before the school year started, when it was still the summer before fifth grade for Nick and his friends, Mrs. Granger was already busy. Every parent of every new fifth grader got a letter from her. Nick's mom read part of it out loud during dinner one night in August. Every home is expected to have a dictionary in it so that each student can do his or her homework properly. Good spelling and good grammar and good word skills are essential for every student. Clear thinking requires a command of the English language, and fifth grade is the ideal time for every girl and boy to acquire an expanded vocabulary. And there were a list of dictionaries that Mrs. Granger thought would be acceptable for home study. Mrs. Allen said, it's nice to have a teacher who takes her work this seriously. Nick groaned and tried to enjoy the rest of his hamburger, but even watermelon for dessert didn't cheer him up much. 
Nick had no particular use for di the dictionary. He liked words a lot, and he was good at using them, but he figured that he got all the words he needed just by reading, and he read all the time. When Nick ran into a word he didn't know, he asked his brother or his dad or whoever was handy at what it meant, and if they knew, they'd tell him. But not Mrs. Granger. He had heard all about her, and he had seen fifth graders in the library last year, noses stuck in their dictionaries, frantically trying to finish their vocabulary sheets before English class. And it was still a week before school, and Nick had already felt like fifth grade was going to be a long year. That's the end of chapter two, Comets. I'll be back later this week with chapter three. I hope you are reading every day. Remember, I miss you, and I'll see you soon.